I think it will be her. This is Jonathan Agar here for Pro Boxing Fans, joined by Johnny Nelson here. A uh, big press conference to announce Chris Billum Smith against Richard Riatpool too. Johnny, your old division back on fire? Back on fire. Uh, we filmed the gloves are off with these two yesterday. And let's not kid and con anybody. There's no bad blood here between these two. It's, it's professional jealousy. That's what it's about. Uh, both very nice guys. Um, both have something they need to, 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 to the, the, the different reasons why they need to win. You look at Chris Bill and Smith, second defence of his title. And I usually say, say at this point, being a champion comes with responsibility. And, uh, and if you are not prepared to take on that responsibility, you usually lose it in your third or second or third defence. I think for Chris, this is the only guy that's beating him as a pro professional. So there's, if, if there's anything that's going to make you step up your game, make you want it more than you've ever wanted it before, apart from getting the title, is a fight like this for Chris. For Richard Riappo, he's been on the, on the sidelines, frustrated, waiting and waiting and waiting. He's now getting in with a guy that he beat five years ago. Both fighters are different fighters now, so if he goes in there with a the complacency, knowing that he's beaten him, I just have to get in there and turn up again. He, he's, he's made a massive mistake. I think it's an intriguing fight, both bangers. I think it's going to be a lot harder for both fighters than it was the first fight, but I think Salhurst Park will be mad. Johnny, you were involved in rematches in the past. When you went into them, what, what do you think? Do you, do you think I've already I've already fought this guy, I know how he's going to fight, or is it different? Uh, rematches for me were amateurs and professional, and all, so to me it's two different, it was two different things. And usually if you're getting with someone and you're fighting them again, it's usually a gimme. This isn't a gimme. You know, I'm quite sure if Chris had a choice, this wouldn't happen. Uh, or would it, you know? Would he just think, you know, I want to just avenge the only loss I have in my career? Um, rematches don't tell the true story. Um, and so so we'll just see about the development of both fighters or the deterioration uh, of both fighters over the last five years. And that will tell us so much more. The bookmakers have got Riappel quite a big favourite. Does that surprise you, given sort of Chris is the champion, he's the guy with momentum? Uh, he does, actually, because Chris beat Lawrence O'Coley. It was a nightmare. Um, and, and who beat some good opponents. And Chris has, has actually done it the hard way. Um, Richard Riappel needs to ignore that, but the bookmakers stay. Because if you get if you hear things like that and you start to follow that that that, that trail of thought, that's where you have a, a false sense of security. Who's got more to lose here, Johnny? Is it is it the champion Billum Smith or is it Riappel here? Um, I think it's the champion because he he's, he's just captured the title, and of course it's it's something you want to make money out of, something you want to travel around the world, um, and uh, exhibited. Uh, for Richard Riappo, um, of course you're gonna you're gonna see a heartbroken guy, uh, but you know what? There are other versions of the belt. You know, stars make fights, so it's not the old. It's not over. Uh, but you just got to think to yourself, how would you get over it? Johnny uh, Ben Whitaker uh, and Ezra Aranyeka uh, traded words in that press conference. Is this? You know, Ben's never really had an opponent that's, you know, talking to him like this and things like that. What does that do to a fighter when, you know, the first guy who's trashed all you in a press conference, is it relevant or not? I think Ben is offended uh, that, that somebody beneath him has had the, given the, been given the opportunity because of something like that he did. He said, I've, I've worked too hard to have to answer to people like this. So Ben is probably annoyed at that rather than... Uh, giving somebody what he wishes for, wishes for. So, so I think Ben will work twice as hard than he would normally, and he works hard to make it, set an example of Annie Rekka. Um, um I think Annie Rekka did the right thing to get himself in this position. And if you're a fighter that's not got a promoter or manager that's behind you, backing you up and pushing you, giving you great opportunities, you've got to do things like this. It's like watching a Rocky movie all over again with with uh, Clubber Lang. You've got to do things like this, make an, make an ass of yourself. 
so I get it I, I get why he's done it I get why he's got the opportunity and I get what, why Ben is kind of peeved off because he's a hunter he likes being a hunter at this stage of his career uh, just two more to ask Johnny uh, Anthony Joshua said earlier this week that he's going to uh, fight the winner of either Wilder and Zhang or Dubois and Hergovic out of the, it's basically down to who uh, his excellency Turkey Al Sheikh thinks has the best performance who do you think it will be and who, who do you think will be against Joshua on, in September I think it will be Hergovic uh, I don't think Wilder will win um, that's going off his last performance and if it, Wilder does win out of all of them it's him that's the biggest bums on seats I don't think he does uh, but, but, but we'll see um, uh, and for Anthony Joshua, he's he's talking about his career. He's not talking about Tyson Fury. You know, Tyson Fury will be fighting in a few weeks' time. He's not talking about it because he's sick of playing that, dancing that dance. So, um, uh, but I think if Wilder wins, it's him. No matter who wins out of all of them. Uh, if he doesn't, I, th- I reckon it'll be Hergovic. And uh, finally, uh, Tony Bellew, uh, who's obviously faced Usyk, said that Fury struggles with fighters smaller and quicker than him, and now he's facing, facing potentially the best, the quickest, the smallest fighter, the best one of the lot in the world. Is that a concern for Tyson Fury? If you're, if, if you're a Tyson Fury fan, are you concerned that he may have struggled with smaller fighters in the past? I think Tyson Fury has to be the best version of himself. Anything less than he loses. He's said and done everything and put his name, his, his reputation, his achievements on the line and said, how am I going to let a little gap team cruiserweight step up to beat me historically? It, it doesn't happen. And it, it, when he said it, his presser, I actually agree with him. The best heavyweights will not be beaten by the, the best cruiserweights. The best cruiserweights will beat most heavyweights, but not the top tier ones. So if Tyson Fury is still top tier, still at his best, he wins. If he's anything below that, he loses against a guy that that is far too dangerous to give that chance to. All right, Johnny, I uh, appreciate your time. I'll let you get back to your, your lunch. What is it? It's my patty. <laughs> I'm sorry for ruining it, but uh, yeah, appreciate it, Johnny, and I'll, I'll see you next week in Cardiff. Thank you. Yeah.